Γεια σας στα ελληνικά. Hi, this is our English. It can get better. Καλύτερα γίνεται in English. And let me turn that thing on. Let's go live on YouTube. Hopefully it will work better than yesterday. And I will be waiting for Gina. So let me introduce you to Gina. I promise you Gina is going to be here tonight with us. So I don't know if you know Gina Devi. And I'm waiting for her to join us. So I hope she will make it. Right? Hi. Please do write where you're joining us from. And let me, let me tell you a little bit about Gina Devi. If you're not following her, I recommend very strongly that you do follow her. I recommend very strongly that you do buy her new book, The Audacity to be Queen. And if you can't hear me or you can't see me, please put it on the comments. I can see you guys. There, Gina is here. And I was just about to introduce her. So let me just take this off. And hopefully she will join us in a second. So, hey. Hello, hey, beautiful. Oh my God, how are you? I'm so happy we made it. Internet oh, boy, yes. You with me. That's so great. I was just about to give a short introduction and I was talking about your book, The Audacity to be Queen. And bravo, yes, yes, you know it. <laughs> I've been sharing it everywhere. I've been prescribing it everywhere. So Thank I'm, I'm so you. happy you can join us. And the, the short introduction I wanted to make about you is uh, beyond the obvious things that everything, everybody can find about you in the internet. I think that you're an amazing entrepreneur because everybody can see the coaching thing. Everybody can see how inspiring you are and what you've accomplished through divine living, through your retreats, through your programs, and through um, all the amazing work we've been doing all this year. You're also an author now, an international author. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy. But Thank I want you. to also stress that you are an entrepreneur. You're an amazing entrepreneur. You're self-made, totally self-made. I see Kendall is posting divinelyliving.com slash book. Guys, go there, have a look, order it now. You're going to get a bunch of amazing free stuff. And I really, really, I'm so happy you made the time because I think a lot of people are now wondering, like, what, I mean, the world is falling apart. I'm going to do the queen thing. And what is this queen thing? And I think that now more than ever, we need that. So tell me, what is this queenhood thing about you? Oh, Nancy, it's so good to be with you. And I think back to our time in Athens last summer, and it's like, you know, how quickly things, how quickly so much has changed. And at the same time, um, you know, there, there, are, there, we know that there are people suffering and we are so grateful to the doctors and nurses who are on the front lines. And we know that there are families who have lost, lost their loved ones. And our heart certainly breaks globally for, for those people in those circumstances. And that is not everyone's experience. We can have empathy and compassion and awareness about what is happening for certain people in the world. And um, one of the things that I write about in the book is we all have a divine assignment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my, my current divine assignment, and for most of my clients, the divine assignment is not to shut down, to be in fear, and not continue to move forward, manifesting your most fabulous life. And clearly the same seems to be going for you. You, I mean, <laughs> leave, leave it to you, stronger than ever, more visible than ever, like, you know, connecting um, women like us, doing positive programming. I just saw like a bunch of my clients, um, you yeah, know, from the States and Canada that. come I'm in, you know, it's many. like, yeah, so I mean, oh, can ah! Yes, she's here. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, and so, you know, the, I believe that this, this is our job as queens right now to be the voice of light, to be the voice of love, to be the face of positivity. Mm -hmm. And this is um, so much of what the, the book about being queen is about, that we have a choice to be a queen 
or I write about a lot of different archetypes. We have a choice to be the, the martyr, the victim, the little Miss Perfect, the paranoid gangster. That's one of my favorites. Um, what what, what yeah, is the paranoid gangster? Is it the, the, the paranoid gangster? Or? It's like, you know, it's, it's the one that's like assuming the worst and is paranoid and then goes <laughs> out to lash out and um, judge or rage. Uh, you know, so I tell kind of a funny and humbling story in the book about when I turned into the paranoid gangster or the paranoid gangster took me over um but the what i teach in the book and what is so important and so much about the work that you do is we always have a choice to be the best version of ourselves, to show up to push our shoulders back um and to choose love because you know it's like the the truth is whatever you believe in god's spirit universe is bigger than the coronavirus. The, the, the coronavirus is not the biggest thing in the world, that love is still bigger. And that's where we have to put our faith and our focus. I, I so agree with you. I so agree with you. And I'm, I'm speaking, I'm, and I'm doing a lot of live things. I'm, I mean, I'm going live every day, as you've seen. I'm doing a lot of things with um, big corporations nowadays. And the biggest blockage that people seem to have is that because this is happening, I have to belittle myself. I have to put mm -hmm. my, my goals and my dreams on hold until something else comes along or until we, we can be not locked down anymore and everything. And that to me is the opposite of being the queen of your life. I got a question for you. Yes. Do you hear that from men and women or just women? Well, mostly women. Good question. Right? That's yes. when, when this yes. first broke, Women are like, oh, I feel guilty. I shouldn't sell. And I was like, says who? You know, if yeah. you're a business owner, if you're, if you got a book that's going to be pos bring positivity in the world more than ever, I'm like, I follow spiritual guidance. I did not hear God tell me, shut your business down, don't sell. Um, that wasn't my divine assignment. It, the opposite, like that, like just like you, getting out there even more. Um, promoting not not just for financial gain but because I know that when people consume what I have to offer it's going to uplift their life it's going to benefit their life um, you know any of my business programs are going to help them make money and start businesses because people need money right now and it's people like us that are keeping the global economy going so no no I mean I've done additional things for free exactly. Um, exactly. you know I've, I've offered a free course uh, we're donating a portion of proceeds to a, a charity like we're doing additional things but my business is not shut down at all and that's great because I think especially in our line of business this is when people need us most this is yes. when people and I think I, I was talking uh, this morning to um, about a hundred um, women entrepreneur and they were all saying that they're a bit uh, hesitant in calling the clients and telling them that they're still around and Really, I, I, I was just urging them to just get out there because, and, and my main argument was, what if you call this customer one month later and, you know, then you feel like this whole horrible thing is gone away so you can talk to your customer and you call her and she tells you or he tells you, oh, now you remembered me? Three days ago, my grandfather died from coronavirus. Where were you? So I think this is the time to stand by your clients and stand by your, your, your friends and, and everybody, not to shut down and, and just stand 100%. So, 100%, yeah. 100%. And, you know, it's, um, we need to be very careful about where we're getting our information, you know, because this, this unnecessary guilt that predominantly women take on about, like, it's not okay, says who? Because that, to me, is, is the programming of Little Miss Perfect. Little Miss Perfect that I write about in the book is a people pleaser. And she's so afraid of offending someone else. But because she's afraid, she's getting her information from fear. Yes. Uh, and she's not thinking about love, which is the other side. Love is about how can you contribute? How can you uplift people? It feels good to purchase right now. Like, I'm, I'm looking for loungewear. Like, I mean, like, I want, like, I want to buy some clothes right now. You know, like I want, um, I'm, I'm purchasing people's products because I'm, yes. you know, so much of my business was um, about live events and I'm pivoting. I'm doing more online things. I'm going to start a membership, but I'm studying this stuff. So I'm purchasing products. I'm buying loungewear, like, and it feels 
good and it keeps the economy uh, moving and growing. No, that's fantastic. I, I so agree. And um, I wanted to call today's episode Queens in Lockdown because <laughs> <laughs> you are like the, the queen going out there and you're doing your thing and it's fantastic. And again, for those who joined just now, um, because we're also live on YouTube and unfortunately they cannot see you, but they can hear you. I'm going to post um, the, the whole thing later. But do Great. go, and, do go and, and look for Gina. It's Gina DeV. Find her books, find her offerings. I, I, I'm following now your fantastic eight, um, eight video course that you're giving for free. And yes. It's fantastic. It's fabulous. I love it. I'm loving Thank you. I'm happy to give the, the link here as well. Yes. Um, I yes, create, please. this is one of the things I'm doing for free. The rest of it, you got to buy. But <laughs> one of the things is, yes. um, if you go to divineliving.com forward slash audacity, that's divineliving.com forward slash audacity. You're going to get an eight part video course. It comes with, um, there's live calls with me. There's a really vibrant Facebook group with women from all over the world. Uh, there's great. workbooks and templates. So it is completely free. It is a companion course to the book. So if you want to get the book, cause it will, it will make a little more sense, but you don't have to, the, the course is completely for free. Yes, and you I have love to. Her. It's awesome. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I mean, um, it's, it's just such a joy, I think, for all of us to learn how to pivot, be more creative, more resourceful, yeah. um, and use this as the opportunity that it's meant to be, not just for financial gain, but for all of us to be more creative, to come closer together, and to be more generous as well. Yes, and, and I'm thinking what we were discussing today with this uh, particular group of people, we're discussing about all the opportunities, and it's it's a little bit of a cliche, you know, in every crisis, there is an opportunity. But then it is a cliche if you choose to see it as a cliche. It's not a cliche if you choose to see it as a question of what can I do different? And my idea was that, um, you, you know, the, the Trojan War and Odyssey and everything. Well, this whole thing would have happened if Odysseus he stood outside um, the, the Trojan town, you know, the big walls, and he never thought of a Trojan horse. So for me, it's the time for all of us to go back and find, not for a bad purpose, to, to conquer something, but find a Trojan horse that will conquer and will get into our minds, that will get us to do something different and, and break these big walls and put us out there. And yes, make money. There is a big taboo about making money, especially amongst women. And well, we're I, busting that up, aren't we, Nancy? We don't believe that. Well, <laughs> yep, you, you are doing a fantastic job around the globe with that. And I love you for that because I think it's time that women stopped with this. I mean, coronavirus, the pandemic. No, it's, it's the last that we know of. The first that we know of is guilt. We're all running around being so guilty. So I mean, can you imagine? You've met my husband. Can you imagine Glenn, like king of a man, like... I, I feel guilty yeah. for making money right. Like I feel like like you would just laugh if you you can't even imagine it's, it's uh, true. you know men saying that. And so women free yourselves. That's so much why I wrote this book. You know, give yourself permission to do life on your terms and to do what's right for you. If it's right for you to do something for free right now and contribution, beautiful. A lot of us are doing that. But one of the feminine principles is to take a stand for the and. You know, the masculine thinks in either or. And so many women are in their masculine mindset. Mm -hmm. They think either, um, either people are gonna like me or they're not gonna like me, or I, um, it's okay to make money or it's not okay to make money. I, or I have to do something for free or not. but the stand for the and is the feminine where do something for free and sell whatever your products or services are and make money and be of service support yourself and support the world and this is why I wanted to introduce you as an entrepreneur because I think this is the entrepreneurial mindset that we need to have and it could be in a big business and it can be in a small business it doesn't matter you could be a solopreneur it's still relevant and also, I see the big corporations, like um, I've got clients that are all over the world. That's how they think. You know, the Coca-Colas and the Vodafones and the Wins and everybody. They, they don't sit back and say, oh, my God, let's give. Um, uh, now that everybody needs internet, let's give it to them for free. Let's give the calls away for free. Mm -hmm. Nobody does that. And it makes sense. 
because then we would expect everything for free and then we go to this righteousness path like i'm i'm supposed to have everything for free and i don't believe that i think i'm i'm supposed to have a great deal of things but i'm also supposed to go and get them you know i don't yes. think somebody's going to sorry i mean, i lost you there you still there good yeah being in it being in exchange feels good you know it's like breathing in and breathing out and i think that the important thing is that people have opportunity and people mm -hmm. have choice to create their own economy in that sense and you know that's one of the blessings of living at this time on the planet that from the comfort of our own homes or the quarantine of our own homes that literally we're sitting around in loungewear we have access to the global marketplace there are so many free trainings and paid trainings on how to start a side hustle, a main business, um, so that nobody needs to be in fear of lack of finances. There's like, you can start your own business, join a multi-level marketing business. There's Amazon reseller businesses. Like it's just endless what you can actually do literally from your phone at home. Yes, I, I agree. What would you say, I remember, from um, last time we met, um, the comment that was most resonant with, uh, with my audience was when you said that I am not available. This concept oh. of unavailability, I, I can't tell you how many hundreds of emails I got like, this is unavailability thing, this is fantastic. So how, because this is a big question right now, um, especially for people that have to work from home, and have kids running around and don't have any help from grandmothers or grandfathers. We do that in Greece, but now you can't do it because you're going to kill them, basically. So we don't do it anymore. So how, how do you put some boundaries? Um, and how do you become unavailable to all the things that are pouring onto your head? Yes, yes. So becoming unavailable is one of the, becoming unavailable for what you don't desire is one of the most powerful gifts a woman can give to herself and the first thing that i would say is as a queen take a look at what the opportunity really is of the moment because i know a lot of women and particularly mothers who i certainly bow to especially mothers of small children there's all this like i gotta work i gotta work i gotta work and i gotta deal with the kids and, and there's this tug of war you know this too shall pass and True. these are your children and when are you going to have this literally ice, this designated isolated time again with your children? And I guess that, you know, yes, you need to do what you need to do as a businesswoman, but like how much of an opportunity is this for you to bond with your children in a way that you might not ever have again? Like, you know, on a certain level, I hope that the world never experiences this pandemic yes. again. But the opportunity right now, you've got a couple of months here to be, I don't know, cooking recipes with your kids that you have and, and reading books that you have and, and playing games that you have. And, and you, know, you need to keep your business going to whatever degree you do, but you have the rest of your life to go make money in your business. Like do what you need to. So the first thing I would say is like, get really clear. What must you do in your business to make the amount of money that you need to have. This doesn't need to be the month you hit your financial stre stretch goals. And, you know, do what you need to, to to honor the client contracts that you have, do your fulfillment. Um, so that's one thing I would say, take the pressure off because I know how hardworking you are. I know what an overachiever you are. And so like, you've got time for that. So right now, really look at what's important right now to keep the business going and then to just really enjoy the time with your children. Um, so that's, that's the first thing that I would say. Next is setting boundaries. Mm. Um, whether it's with like, it's like children or animals. It's like, we have a puppy right now and um, Glenn, we were crate training the puppy. I'm sorry, I don't mean to you know, compare your child to my dog. Oh no, get, get, I just, get, for a moment, get for a moment. I um, my dog than my child. Okay. <laughs> my husband in the whole equation, you know, take the dog. <laughs> so I'll stay with the dog, train my husband and kids. So no we're, we're, you know, so Oscar's being crate trained and it's like it's yesterday in LA it was cold and it was rainy and normally have the, we have the dogs outside, so they had to come inside and Glenn wouldn't let him out of the cage. He's like he's like, I don't want to deal with having to train him. 
And I was like, the dog can learn to sit and just stay there. And he's like, I don't want to deal with it, Gina. So I went and got Oscar out of his cage, freed him. <laughs> and I had him sit next to me. And he's a puppy. So, he, you know, and I was like, sit and stay. And it was like a five minute process. And he got it. And so I would say, you said, like, no matter how young your children are, you can set yes. boundaries with them. You know, they can learn when quiet time is or when mommy's having her own time or when mommy's working. And, you know, like I said, this is a temporary time, you know, if it's whatever it is, if it's time for that, your husband to jump in and take over, like set that boundary. This is your time with the child. If you put the child in front of a a TV right now, like it's okay. You know, it's a temporary amount of time. So I would say just really be focused on the present moment. I, I so agree. And as a mother um, and puppy owner <laughs> and husband owner, I, I so agree. I so agree. And I think, I think it's also a very good opportunity to become the role models that we want for our kids. Because if, we have to please everybody and we have to put everybody else's agenda, including our child, above our, our everything else, above our own needs. I think what we're teaching them is to, you know, to put everybody else ahead, to never listen to themselves, to never set yep. boundaries, to, to never say no to people. So I think it's a great opportunity to teach our kids also, you know, to, to, to teach them how to say no, how to set boundaries, how to respect somebody else and how to ask for respect from other people. So yes. um, it's, it, I, think, I think the coronavirus with the tragedies that it has pulled, but it, it has brought us such amazing opportunities in a personal level and, and in a professional level that I don't think we're gonna have the chance to experience ever again. Seriously. Right, exactly. Um, the yeah. entire world has become one. So the entire world is pivoting their priorities. You know, you're yes. not alone with it. So, you know, it can, it can feel isolated and it can feel scary, but it doesn't need to. Like understand everybody is pivoting their professional priorities. Yes. Um, I had a, a, a global in-person book tour planned. Um, they got canceled, you know, the, the second know. week, my, the week after my book came out, you know, everything went into lockdown. So. I'm pivoting the priorities and like, look, I get to do things like this that we didn't have this planned originally. And so there's like yeah. online opportunities. Um, there's different online programs that I'm working on. And the other thing that everyone gets to do is prioritize themselves. So pivot your, pri your professional priorities and prioritize time for you. And it's a very special time. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to ask you something there because people see, um, see you or see me and we have a lot of energy and when we're going live we put this energy out and i, I honestly want to say when you book tour i know how, how hard you worked for this book and how how much you love it weren't you bummed weren't you disappointed when it was canceled it's it i had a, that easy no, it's yeah I, it, well i had a two-step process one you can't write a book called the audacity to be queen and have the exercises in the book that program you to know and believe in your core that everything is happening for you not to you mm -hmm. and not apply it you know and so when i realized that my book tour was going to be canceled i should say postponed uh rescheduled <clears throat> I, yes. I felt Respond. like this cloud of sadness coming towards me and i looked at it and it's like my energy field was too strong. Like it repelled it and it went away. Cause I was like, you know what, Jeannie, you have a choice. You can, you can sit there and you can be sad or you mm -hmm. can just like take the shortcut, which is like just, okay, this is happening for me, not to me. What do I get to do? Media, I just did a, a, a television morning show in Virginia this morning from the comfort of my own home. Like media has turned virtual. So I'm getting more media that I don't have to fly across the United States for. And I'm doing different podcasts and online Instagram lives that I wouldn't have been doing. So what am I going to get like depressed about that? This is a beautiful opportunity. I'm probably going to reach even more people than like signing books, you know, at each tour. Sure. Stop. So that was the first step. So I was like, okay, I got this. And then I noticed I was like sleeping a lot, like, like 10, 11 hours a night. <laughs> and I was like, why am I so tired? And I, and I realized it's because I was pushing my emotions away. And I 
I, I said, so I asked myself, what's coming up for you? And I said, you know, even though there's all these amazing online opportunities, you know, Nancy, we're, we're extroverts and we love being in person with people. And yeah. I realized I felt sad that I didn't get to look into someone's eyes and hug them and sign their book. And, and I felt sad about that. So I let myself cry. And I let, like, I think as a queen, we get to feel our emotions. So I felt sad, but it was like, it was like 10, 15 minutes. I, so I was there for myself. I felt it, but I didn't need to indulge in it. And I didn't need to make it last longer. Um, so it was like, mostly it's happening for me, not to me. I'm good. Actually, I'm feeling a little sad, felt the sadness. And now it's like, let's seize the opportunity. Super, super. Thank you for that. It's very powerful. I have a question. Um, yes. And, and um, it might be, help me. It's, it might be um, a different of culture. I think there is this contradiction in the title of your book, right? Because audacity... Tell me. It, you know what I mean, right? You get it? Audacious, it's, it has a negative connotation, you know? It's like in Greek, uh, at least, audacious, the word, it's thrasos. And that's something that sounds like, you know, you're too much. You're asking for too much. So um, why is it audacious to be a queen? Why is it not a privilege or um, an obligation for each and every one of us? So I do think that there may be something that is missing in the translation. Um, to say that in, a, in my interpretation in English, uh, <clears throat> or in American English anyways, in American the audacity... English, yes. It's a little bit more, um, I would say, it's considered having a bold confidence. Great. So would, would be the translation. Um, there's like a bold, like, you know, it's, it, it's bold to position yourself as a queen, to give yourself permission to be the queen. Okay, so I yeah. think that that's um, how I think most people in America would define that word. This is great because um, I wanted to mention that because we Europeans, you know, we're more preppy and, and we're more reserved and we have a lot of don'ts and, and shouldn'ts and, and all You're that. You're Greek! Don't, that, that's not even true! You're Greek! You are not oh. conservative and reserved! Oh my God, oh my God, you cannot imagine Greeks. We are conservative, we're extroverts, but we are very conservative. We're very concerned with our image. Not in we dinner! Not, oh yeah, we do not talk about money. In, in Greece, it's like... Oh, you... that's different. Okay. No, I'm like, I've you... been to your beach clubs. I've been to your dinner parties. Oh, you're not conservative. Oh, that, but that's, no, no. When you're wearing a bikini, you can be whatever you want. Okay? I'm talking in, in the other life, in real life. <laughs> when you go out in business, when you go about your life, when you make choices, being audacious. I like the word. I like the word. And I want to take any negative connotation that anybody might have and say, take it off and throw it away and say... It takes some nerve to be a queen. Yes. It takes nerve. And it takes, if you will excuse the language, it takes... Is it a problem? Ovaries. It, it takes, takes ovaries. ovaries. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but we're growing some of the others. But, yeah. but it, takes, it takes a strong gut and it takes to be... You know, it, it takes a lot. And if that's what we're going to call audacious, let's call it audacious. But you need a lot of that if you're going to claim your... Queenhood? Is that a word? Yes, yes. Good. It is. Your it's a word all throughout the book. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. So I think I think we need to step above this and, and raise above this. Oh, is it okay to be audacious? Like, come on. It's like just go be queen. I don't care if it's audacious or not. Just go do it. And I think that's what we're missing. And that's why I loved your book. And and um, I'm already. I've talked to my publisher. I'm waiting to hear back from him. I really, really wanted to be translated in Greek. I think for all the, you know, no matter how much dancing we do on the, on the tables in the beach bars, because this is what you're saying, I think that in Greece, we need a lot of that. I think in Greece, we're quite behind in where the woman stands. There's still a lot of people that think that, um, you know, it's, it's not okay to work. A lot of moms that look at me strange at school when I say I have a lot of work and they feel you know, pity for me. <laughs> and it's okay. I, I'm very happy with it. But I see people just getting smaller because they don't have the nerve to just step into what they could be or what they could accomplish or everything. So 
Um, yes. So I think I'll say yes, yes. <clears throat> I'll say this in closing. And um, Nancy, I want to come back and play with you so much more. It's you're just always such a light to be around. I think that for 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 Greeks and so many of the European cultures, go back to your roots of ancient times. Mm -hmm. Because the, the ancient Greeks were very, the ancient Greek women were very audacious. And you go back to your Greek mythology and you go back to like what the culture is actually founded upon. And there is a fierceness and there is a femininity and there is a royalty and there is a confidence and a wholeness and there's a work ethic as well. And what's happened over time is that it, that became un, an unsafe way for women to be. Um, to work, to make money, to be in leadership, to be visible, to be too beautiful. I'm, I'm here. I said, um, I said, it's about integrating the ancient times with the new yes. world times because of how rich your culture is um, and bringing it all together. Well, absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. I know you made the time and I, I think everybody should make the time to just press the button and go buy Gina's book. I think this time is a perfect time for reading and for exercising inside exercise here mental exercise and and you know i love you thank you so much for being here it was exactly. fantastic love you so much nancy thank you for having me and thank you everyone for being here go be the queen of your life lots of love lots of love gina thank you so much bye bye bye